Welcome back. In this video, we're going to add some dots to our maze that Pac-Man can eat, and when he's eaten them all, the game will stop. So, we've got Pac-Man uh, moving around on our stage, and we have a maze for him to move within, but it's not much of a game if you can't win or complete a level, so we need a challenge, and that's where we're going to go with this video. Um, so the challenge for Pac-Man is going to be to eat up all of the dots that we're going to put on the screen and the level or the game will be complete when all the dots have been eaten. You can think of these dots as like little breadcrumbs or something that Pac-Man's going to eat as he goes around the maze. So let's begin by making uh, our first dot sprite. So to do this we just need to go to the new sprite button, it looks like a paintbrush, click on that and again we get the sprite editor that we've seen before when we made our Pac-Man. Now this is a very simple sprite, it's basically just a little dot in a colour that contrasts well with our backdrop. So I've got a black background so I'm going to use sort of quite a sort of beigey kind of colour. Um, you could use, if you've got a light background you might want to use a darker colour that stands out against it. And all you need to do is grab the rectangle tool Okay, and we want a filled in rectangle and then near enough the middle of our uh, sprite editor we just draw the little block. Okay, and that's it. That's our sprite drawn. Um, because we want to adopt sort of really good practice with our game, we're going to name our sprite. So let's just click on the info button and change it to uh, dot. Okay, and uh, there we go. There's our dot and you can see he's pretty big. So we can shrink it down using the shrink tool until it's a suitable size for our maze. So that's a pretty good size for Pac-Man to eat. I could probably go one smaller. Okay, um, yeah, that, that will do nicely. So we've made uh, a sprite, a simple square or rectangle even, um, with a filled in colour and named it Dot. So why don't you go and do the same on yours and then come back and I'll show you how to add the code. Fantastic. Okay, so what we need to do now is write the code that is going to um, power the game in many ways. And um, we want to look at writing some code that is going to check um, how many dots remain on our maze. Okay, and then when that's zero, we know that they've all been eaten and the level is over. Um, so there's a few things we need to do in order for this to work and lots of this is going to happen with the stage because the stage is a bit like the controller of the game. Um, so anything that, any sort of information or data that needs to belong to sort of the whole game rather than to a specific sprite, we tend to put in the stage. So let's click on the stage and we need to go to the scripts for the stage. At the moment we don't have any scripts uh, but we're going to create some now. So the first thing I want is to make sure that when our game begins um, the dots remaining is set to zero. And you might think, well that's odd, why aren't we setting it to the number on our maze? Surely we should set it to one because there's one on our maze. Um, but we're going to come to that in a minute, I promise you. But for now, let's just make it so that when we click on the green flag we set, now we need a new variable here, so we go to data Okay, and a variable is just, uh, it's, it's a bit like a pigeonhole and you give it a name and you can put a value inside it that you can then look up again later. So we're going to make a new variable and we're going to call it dots remaining. Okay, now I've chosen to write that sort of all as one word. You could put a space in there. Uh, this is just because that's the sort of habit that I've got into with programming. Um, but you can you can write that with a space, it doesn't matter, you can use capitals or not. What's important though is that your variable name is meaningful and representative of the information it will store. So this variable is going to store the number of dots that remain on our maze, so the name dots remaining is a very sensible name. Okay, so then we click OK and we get a whole load of options appear of things we can do with dots remaining and what I want to do is set dots remaining to zero when the game begins. Okay, so let's take a pause there again and why don't you go and do that on your scratches now. 
Okay, that's great. So you should now have on your stage a bit of code that says when green flag is clicked, set dots remaining to zero. So we now need to add some code to the dot itself. And what we're going to do is add some code that says when the dot shows itself on the maze, it's going to increase the number of dots remaining by one. So basically, it's a little bit like um, the dots are arriving at registration and saying, yep, here I am. And in doing so, we can increase that number of dots that remain. So to do that, make sure you've clicked on your dot, okay, and you're in scripts. And we're going to go to events. And rather than doing this when the game begins with the green flag, um, because it might be you guys might want to adjust your game so that actually um, when the game starts we have a bit of a main menu or something else like that. This is an extension. Um, and so you might not want it that all the dots appear as soon as the game starts. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a different way of doing this and we're going to use a when I receive hat. Okay, so we drag that on and we're going to create a new message. So when I receive show dots, okay, so this is a message that is going to be broadcast by the game later. Again, just go with it for now and hopefully you'll understand it when you see how this is triggered by the stage later on. But for now, you need to say this dot is going to have a little listening block which listens out for a message that's being sent and that message will be show dots. And when it receives the message show dots, we want to first of all show, so it appears, so we can actually see it on the stage, and we want to increase the number of dots remaining by one. So we're going to change dots remaining by one. So again, when this message is sent out later, which says, hey dots, I want you to all show yourselves now, this one will show itself and it will sort of register the fact that it's been added to the stage by increasing the dots remaining variable value by one. Okay, so again, why don't you go and do that on yours right now? Great stuff. Okay, and while we're here, uh, before we leave the dot, actually, it would be quite good to do another event that will come in handy later on. Um, when I receive, and instead of show dots, let's make a new message, and this time it's going to be hide dots because it might be important later in our game that we can hide all the dots in one go. Um, for example, um, we might add uh, maybe an enemy that when they touch Pac-Man, he dies and it's game over and we want all the dots to disappear when we show our game over screen. So we want to have a hide dots function as well. So we're going to press OK. When I receive hide dots, dots even, go to looks and then hide. Okay. So when I receive hide dots, hide. So again, go and do that on yours. Okay, so now you should have a dot on your stage with two scripts, one that shows the dot when the show dots message is sent and increases the dots remaining by one, and one that receives the hide dots message and it hides when it does that. So what we want now is we need to write the code that is going to be triggered when Pac-Man touches the dot. Because when Pac-Man touches the dot, we want the dot to disappear, but also importantly, we want some sort of um, score to increase, and again, the dots remaining to decrease. Um, because again, that's, the, that's actually what's happening. We're getting rid of the dots and it's that number that the game is going to be checking on to say, have I reached zero yet or not? And if I have, the game needs to be over. So we need to decrease that number every time we eat a dot. And yeah, we want to add a nice score for our players as well so that each dot they eat, they get, let's say, 50 points more. So um, to do that, I want you to make sure that you are on the dot Okay, we can see the dot scripts. I'm just going to move that over here, make some space. And we're going to add some more functionality to this show dots message because show dots is kind of like the start of life for this dot, really. It's saying, look, when you show yourself, when you turn up for this game, I want you to show yourself, 
I want you to increase the number of dots on the board, the counter of those dots by one, and I want you to start listening out forever for the um, for a collision with Pac-Man. So from the moment you arrive, you have nothing else to do but just keep checking over and over and over again to see if you are touching Pac-Man and respond if you are. So in order to do that, we can get a forever loop from our control blocks. All right, so uh, we click on control, we go to forever and we drop it underneath there. And we need an if, and we're gonna put that inside. And the thing that we're checking for is if I'm touching Pac-Man. So under sensing, we have something that's gonna do exactly that. If touching, we drop that in the diamond, and from the drop-down menu, we can choose Pac-Man. So if I'm touching Pac-Man, then, now we could write all the code in here that is going to actually uh, handle this, so that would be things like increase the score, um, decrease the number of dots remaining, and so on. But it's probably easier for us to send yet another message, which is going to go back to the stage, and then the stage can handle this. And there are many reasons for that. Basically, it's an, a more efficient way of programming, because it means that if later on we want to change something, like the number of points you get each time you eat a dot. Um, by sending a signal which is picked up in one place, we can change that code in one place and it will be changed throughout the whole game. However, if every single dot, and we could have a hundred dots on our maze by the end of this, if every single dot had its own bit of code for how many points should be added and we wanted to change the number of points, then we would have to change it a hundred times over, which would be a real pain. So we're going to do it the efficient way right from the beginning by saying if we're touching Pac-Man, then broadcast the message, and we need a new message, and that message is going to be dot eaten. Okay, so we're going to send a message saying that a dot has been eaten, and once we've done that, we're going to hide the dot so that it no longer appears on the screen, and one last thing I'm going to do as well, because it's still going to be running this forever loop, so I'm going to just put a stop in here, and instead of all, I'm going to say stop this script, so that it doesn't keep checking on and on and on and on. Uh, because again, we might have hundreds of these dots, and if they're all checking for something that isn't going to happen again, that's not very efficient on our CPU, and that might make our computer run out of power quickly and things like that. Okay, so at this stage, we've got an addition to our when I receive show dots block, which is a forever loop. Inside there, we're testing if our dot is touching Pac-Man, and if our dot is touching Pac-Man, we're going to broadcast a message saying dot eaten, we're going to hide the dot, and we're going to stop this particular script. Okay, you go and do the same, and join me back where we're going to go and write the code for the stage to handle um, this event. Okay, so you should now uh, have your dot with its code done. So we're going to go to the stage and we're going to write the code which is going to receive the dot eaten message and is going to um, change the score and the number of dots remaining in response to that and it's going to check whether the game is over or not. So let's click on the stage and we go back to our stages script which at the moment is very simple. I'm going to add uh, an extra variable actually now because we want to uh, do two other things when we click the green flag. I'd like a score variable, so I'm going to create a new one of those, and we need to set that to zero when the game begins. And we also need to broadcast the show dots message, which is going to be picked up by the dots and is going to make them present themselves on the screen. So we need to add those things here. So the first one is let's make this score variable. So we click on data again. We're going to make a variable, we'll call the variable score, and we set score to zero. Okay, and then the next thing is we want to broadcast show dots, so we go to events, broadcast, and because we've already made an event called show dots, we can just choose it from our menu. So we're going to broadcast show dots. Lovely, okay, that's really good. Uh, that's going to make sure that our game does the right things when it starts and I'll just put that out of the way for now and make some space for what we're going to do next. So what we're doing next is we are going to set up uh, a receive block for the dot eaten message. So when 
the game sends a message saying a dot's been eaten, we're going to do a few things. We're going to increase the score uh, and I decide, I've decide i decided I'm going to give our, my players 50 points for every dot. You could do a different amount if you wanted to, but I'm going to give 50 points. Um, I'm going to decrease the number of dots remaining, my little counter for how many dots are remaining, and I'm then going to check to see does the dots remaining equal zero, and if it does, then I can broadcast a message to say the level has been completed. Um, so I've just noticed over here actually, my when I create my variables it gives you little counters for them, um, which is great, but they were just slightly in the wrong place, so you can just click and drag and move them. And this is why I left a gap at the top of my maze by the way, so that they could be out of the way um, and yet still usefully present. Okay, so I've moved those. Right, let's go back to our little when I receive dots eaten block then. So the first thing I want to do is change the score, so not set score but change score, by 50 points. So that will increase the score by 50. I also want to change the dots eaten value, or sorry, dots remaining value, but I want to change it by negative one, okay? It's really important you do negative one because basically change means add or increase. So we want to increase by negative one, i.e. we want to take, take one away, okay? And once we've done that, we want to test and, uh, test and find out whether our dots remaining has reached zero yet. So we use an if statement for that, so we go to back to control, if we get an operator, which is where we'll find our equals, and we drop that in there. Now, it's dots remaining equals to zero is what we want to test. So let's go to data where we can find dots remaining. Okay, if dots remaining equals, and we click in this box and type zero, if dots remaining equals zero, we've reached the end of our level, so let's send another message again, broadcast, and let's do a new message this time, called level complete. Okay, uh, and we need to create a little receiver for that, so when I receive level complete, for now I'm going to go to control and just do stop everything, just stop the whole thing working. Um, you guys might want to extend your game in future, so instead of saying stop all, if level complete is broadcast then you go on to the next level or you show a high scoreboard or you go back to a main menu or anything like that. So it will be here that you change that and that's why I've deliberately um, used a when level, sorry, when I receive level complete message receiver um, because it, it makes it easier for you to adapt this for future use. But for now, the way this is going to work is every time a dot is eaten, this will be fired, it'll change the score by 50, it'll change the dots remaining by negative 1, it'll test whether there are any remaining or not, and if there are none remaining, it broadcasts a level complete message which is picked up here and that stops the game from running. Okay, so that's quite a lot we've done on the stage. I think, again, we might need to take some time here for you to do the same on yours and to catch up with what I've done. Okay, so go away, do that, and then come back, and we will test to see if this works. Lovely, okay, so you should now be in the position that you've got this code set up for your stage, and there's a dot on your maze and we are ready now to test and see if this works. So in theory, if I press the green button, what should happen is that Pac-Man will start moving and I'll be able to move him over to the dot and as soon as he touches the dot, I'll get 50 points. The dots remaining will go down to zero, that will increase to one when I press the green button if all is working and it will go down to zero when I eat the dot and Pac-Man will stop moving because the function of the game will cease because we'll have stopped everything. So let's see what happens. Okay, so Pac-Man's moving, that's great. So I can go across to my dot. Notice my dots remaining are at one and my score is zero. Now I'm gonna to touch the dot and see what happens. Dots remaining's gone down to zero, the score's gone up to 50, and indeed the game has stopped because my dots remaining has reached zero, which means that this little block has triggered, which means that the stop all message has also been fired off. Okay, that's really good. We know that's working and uh, it's important that we test that when we've only got one dot because frankly, um, 
We wouldn't want to do this, put 100 dots on the screen, then find that there's a problem with our code and we'd have to fix them all. So that's great. Okay, why don't you go and test yours works as well? So hopefully yours is working. Um, if it's not, then you might just want to go back and watch the last few minutes again just to see if there's any steps that you've missed. Um, the most likely things that could have gone wrong is that the test for where the dots remaining is zero hasn't been quite set up properly, or that when you um, when a dot is being eaten, you haven't changed dots remaining by negative one. Okay, so make sure that's negative. Okay, if we were to test this again, we'd have a little problem actually. As you can see, the game instantly stops. And the reason for that is because Pac-Man is currently where our dot is going to appear, which means as soon as I press green flag, my dot appears, um, but touches Pac-Man, which ends the game straight away. So a, a nice way to fix this is to make sure that Pac-Man always starts in the same place on our maze. So to do that, click on Pac-Man and move him into where you'd like him to start. Okay, and we're going to adjust our when green flag is clicked block here, and we're going to add to that a little bit of extra functionality. We're going to say when green flag is clicked, we want to move him always to this location. Now, helpfully, if I move Pac-Man to where I want him, the go to block here automatically updates with the coordinates of Pac-Man, the last place that I placed him, which is really handy for us because that's exactly where we want him. So all we have to do is grab this go to from the motion blocks, put it underneath the when green flag is clicked block, and that will make sure that every time we start our game, Pac-Man starts over here. So let's try that again. And there we go. So he's over there. That's great. And let me stop. I'm going to start again. And he goes back to his starting place again. We can also set it so that he's always pointing in the same direction, maybe always to the right as well. So he's going to start here and point to the right every time I start my game. And now we can just test one more time whether I can get my little dot. So let's just find out. And yep, yeah, absolutely. It's still working and we can start and it goes back over there. That's fantastic, that's what we want. I'm really happy with that. So the next thing we need to do is create more of these dots. So to do that, all you have to do is right click on your dot and go to duplicate. And another one will appear. Unhelpfully, it'll appear in a completely random place on the maze, so you have to keep your eye out for where they're appearing. So let's just put a few out. Let's do four just to test again that it's all working before we start putting out hundreds. So let's try this. So here's my Pac-Man. I can see dots remaining is four. My score is zero. So let's go down and eat these. Dots remain two, one, and there we go. The game has finished when all of my dots have been eaten. So that seems to be working pretty well, which means that I'm ready now to add all the dots I need for my maze. But before we do that, you guys need to do a little bit of catching up. So what I suggest you do is just make the changes to your Pac-Man as well. So you need to move him to a location and then set the go to block in there and pointing in a particular direction so that he always starts in the same place. So go and make that change and then you can start duplicating your dots and put three or four dots on your maze and just check that everything's working so that when you start your game you'll see the dots remaining will increase to the number that you have and every time you eat one it decreases by one and when you've eaten them all the game stops. Okay that's the test that you need to do at this stage. Brilliant. Okay, well all that remains now is to add more dots to our maze. So it's just like we did before. We right click and we duplicate and we add our dots. Uh, you know, try and make it quite quite even. Um, evenly spread apart and quite neat if you can. Um, and you can, once you've put them, if they're in the wrong place, you can just click and drag them, move them over. That's not a problem. It does take a little while and it's quite fiddly. So I'm going to leave you to do that. And when you've done that, we're going to come back for a final test and make sure that we can eat them all and everything's working okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got all of my pieces, uh, my dots onto my maze now. You may have noticed as I was doing that that I was stopping every now and again to test and make sure that it was still working because one thing I have found is that sometimes when you duplicate a block, um, Scratch places the new one directly on top of one that you already have there and it's very hard to see that it's been done and you may think, oh, it hasn't worked, I'll duplicate again. And what happens is, if you have two exactly in the same place, that seems to mess up how Scratch actually counts which are remaining. And you can end up in the situation that that dot's remaining score will never get down to zero. Um, so it's important just to keep checking every now and again, make sure that as you do a section, it still works. Okay, um, that's been a really, really big video. We've done loads in this video. Um, so I hope that you've coped with it well and I hope that you've now got to the point that you've got um, you've got your Pac-Man moving, you've got your maze, you've got your dots on your maze and whenever you eat a dot your score goes up, the dots remaining goes down and your game stops when they've all been eaten. So uh, in the next video we're going to add a game complete screen and we're going to put in some bonus sprites that make Pac-Man maybe move a bit faster before we go on to adding some enemies that are going to add another level of challenge into our game. But well done on what you've done so far. If anything's not working, go back in the video to the part that shows you how to do that bit and just check that your code blocks look the same as mine, that you haven't missed any steps out. And um, go and enjoy, you know, what you've done so far. Well done. Uh, you've done a really good job. I'm looking forward to seeing what we do in the next video.